Hi guys, it's Cindy over at Paper Old and New. I have been, um, well, <laughs> actually, the only thing I've been talking about recently is that Halloween journal I'm working on, which I'm still working on, as you guys saw. Um, I have been wanting to try another altered book. Do you guys remember back when I first started my channel in July, um, early August, I showed you an altered book I was working on. It was a practice book, something I was working on to like practice making tags and pockets and seeing what worked and what didn't, testing glues, all that kind of sort of thing. As you can see, here it is. It's still not done because I've been doing so many other things. Um, you know, setting up a craft area, getting the channel working, working on digital printables, um, just all kinds of stuff I've been working on. So I work on this in between. Um, I have, however, been wanting to try um, doing altered books again, because this one, I, I obviously did this wrong. <laughs> I don't know if it's that I didn't take enough pages out, or I, I'm not sure. I thought I would flip through it with you guys, though, and see where it is. Uh, as you can see, it has not been covered yet. Um, my thought process on covering it is... I'm thinking decoupage napkin just so it doesn't interfere with what I've already done to the covers um, because I, I did the inside cover before I thought about it. And um, like I said, test book. Okay, I've moved some things around. I've done some more pages. I've made some more pockets and played with some more journaling cards. So I just thought I would go back and reshow the stuff that I've already showed you or... Um, uh, and, and just kind of show you where this has gotten to. Um, these I still have in this front pocket, this little, this is one of the first tickets I made. <coughs> Excuse me. One of the first tags I made, I'm sorry. Um, and I made it from, it's washi tape. This is Tim Holtz. Uh, and this is the packaging from the Tim Holtz package. Uh, this is also Tim Holtz. Uh, the bug, um, it was some of the first Tim Holtz stuff I had bought, so I used I used uh, more of it than I probably should have. Uh, here's a, a bug kind of sticking out from under. This was a um, scrap of paper that I tore off of one of those angular pockets. I tore it off the page to cover an angular pocket, so I used the corner here. And this bug is kind of tucked up under there. I don't know if you can see that. It's glued down. He doesn't come out or anything. But anyway, I made this pocket. This is some scrapbook paper um, that was postcards, and I just kind of tucked these down in here. This maze was also in that Tim Holtz pack, and I decorated it for uh, um, effect. Uh, yeah, this was, um, and like I said, I put explore and things like that in here just because this was me exploring junk journaling and book altering. Um going on an adventure. This page is nothing but what you see. There's no pockets, no nothing. Okay, here we have, uh, this is just decor on the pocket. Um, I've added some of these. I don't know if you can see those little ladybugs. They came from this sticker sheet. See, there's one there. And I drew on the <laughs> funny thing about that sticker sheet. You peeled off the ladybug. The only thing that came was the little round piece. No antennas, no legs. So I drew them on. Uh, I did make a tag. Um, this is from something I printed and then coffee dyed on copy paper. Um, this is just scrapbook paper kind of collaged on here. Uh, again, uh, coffee dyed paper, scrapbook paper, um, some lace seam binding, and some uh, some of that hemp rope stuff that I have a whole basket of around here somewhere. Uh, so that tucks in there. Getting used to making larger tags and things because I come across pockets even now that I, I'm not making things the right size, so I'm still getting kind of used to that. Um, this little area here, also not a lot of journaling space right away in this book. Um, I mean, you could journal here. This is a coffee dyed wrapping paper that I put back here. And then uh, this was a file folder punch out that I made a, I, I glued it down as a pocket. What I didn't think about at the time was when you're sticking, does that actually, uh-oh. This is before I had good glue, guys. I don't remember what glue I used for this. Also, before I started using the sanding method, I actually made a lot of these. If, I don't know if you can see that. That's um, a Ziploc box. 
So I was making this stuff out of um, actual junk. I mean, I was collecting boxes. I still have some of it. I was collecting boxes and all kinds of stuff. And, uh, you know, making a junk journal. That was my interpretation, so I was using what I... Anyway, this little file folder, uh, again, a lesson learned. Uh, I did not realize that this file folder actually opens. Um, you've seen them. I made those little booklets out of them which haven't turned up anywhere, I know. Uh, so it's got a back on it, and it sticks up a little bit, so this catches when I'm trying to put it back in. That's all I was really trying to say. I don't know, long way about it. Okay, so here was a double pocket. Um, anywhere you see this masking tape, this is the other reason I said I think I did this wrong. Uh, anywhere you see this masking tape is where the binding broke. Can you see here where this is pulling away from the book? This seems pretty glued in still, but I haven't finished these pages back here. This started pulling away, and these pages started um, coming un undone from the book. So uh, here I put a ton of glue back in that seam, and I put some washi tape here. This is that duck masking tape, um, and I've, I did that on a couple of pages, so I've got it here. Uh, here is duck tape, decorative duct tape. I have a roll of this. Um, it's not masking tape, it's actual duct tape. Um, and they decorate it. So I got this, I thought the sunflowers were cute. Uh, so I got a roll of that. I might get another roll whenever I'm out. I really like that. Uh, I think, I don't think that's a, it was like a whole group of pages that were coming out and I had to tape them back in. So, um, yeah, so that's all taped together at the spine. Uh, hopefully it holds. Uh, I got this journaling card here that I made. This, again, I think was made out of a piece of mailing junk that I covered with paper. This was also back when I was just doing around the edges and gluing it down. So the middle, you can feel there's like air, like where it's not stuck. But, um, and I just decorated it with some scrapbook punch outs. And then I've got a bunch of punch out tabs and I used one of those on here. Um, again, this is more scrapbook paper, coffee dyed paper, more punch outs. And then these, again, um, this is actually from a little four by six pad that matches a 12 by 12 pad that I have all about butterfly. Mariposa, I think is the name of the pad. I think it's one of those D, DC... I don't, I don't remember. It's that cube at the top. It says D C W something. I don't remember. <laughs> My memory's going guys. Uh, and then I made this little card again. This was out of junk. That's why it's so, can you hear that? It's a box that then got covered on both sides by, uh, washi tapes and scrapbook paper and decorative decorations. There's a doily. And so those tuck in there. I've been going kind of page by page trying to figure out what to put in each of the pockets. So I've been practicing making large tags. I think I had this one done the last time I flipped through this book. I think it was one of the big ones I had done. So I got some little tickets in there and I had made the comment that I used this piece because it went kind of with this. This is Tim Holtz uh, and this is just some scrapbook paper. Um, I think it was a pad that I took apart. Uh, and this paper here had this girl in it also. So I cut her out and put her over here as a tuck spot. This is also made from cardboard box of some sort. Uh, yeah, so. And then um, this was the waterfall. I know this was in the last time. I don't remember if it was decorated per se. I just kind of threw paper on it. Kind of mini collaged uh, spots that, you know, if you wanted to make yourself a little note, write yourself a little inspirational something, um, you know, whatever. And then I didn't decorate all of the flaps either. Like I was putting stickers on them. The blue ones, I didn't, it looks like I didn't put anything on the blue ones or these pink ones, but these ones I did. This one I did. 
This one I did. Just some stickers. These stickers actually came with this paper, I think. So, and then we have a tuck spot here with a tag. I do have fun making the tags. This was me experimenting with, this is also from Junk. Um, and I had just gotten, I'm trying to remember, I think that was when I had just gotten this guy. And I was messing with it. Oh no, not this one. That was the Tim Holtz um, thing that I showed you at the very beginning I used on that. This is from a pad of tags. This was the back of the pad. I had a whole pad, K and Company made a whole pad of tag shaped. Um, there was another one. I just saw it right here. There's another one. Piece that came out of the pad. This was the back of the pad and I covered it with paper. And then here I made a um, postcard out of, this is another one I had two pads of. I have a, um, I think it's an eight, six by six or an eight by eight. I think it's a six by six, a six by six pad of this with the letters and an eight by, and a 12 by 12 pad of this with the initials on it. So, and then there's nothing in this pocket up here. The other thing I'm realizing is book page is fragile for all this sliding in and out and like only covering it down so far. And then you have this just kind of fragile one layer of book page below this stripe down in here. It's just a layer of book page between this pocket and this pocket. And it strikes me that that's kind of fragile. It, it will tear easy. So um, I've been watching videos and coming up with some new ideas for how to do an altered book, which I was going to share with you, depending on how long this video goes. These are just some other little tags. Oh, I glued an extra piece of paper in here so you could write. I just added an extra piece. And then I made a little, this was getting into collage, more into collage tags and making a, like a cluster kind of on them. Um, you know, this little card, <coughs> excuse me, and using some stamps, you know, just getting used to my stuff as I, um, as I made things. And, uh, um, and I, I put a sticker here. These are small for this pocket. Now I'm kind of realizing, I mean, they tuck in there fine and they stick out the top, but I know that it's like more common to stick something big in there that sticks all the way up to help decorate the page. So, um, this was part of the thing that was coming apart. So it was like a chunk of pages that was coming out and then the pages were separating from each other. So I taped it in and then I taped the pages together. Uh, this was me trying sewing and, um, you can see here I did sew, but there's no stitch because I believe I didn't put the presser foot down. <laughs> this is when I first got my sewing machine. I was new. Um, anyway, so yeah, you can write on it. It's got holes in it, but you can write on it. And that's just a little pocket that only goes to like right there. Uh, and then it's this big side pocket. So these are two pages that overlap to make this pocket. And I just kind of left that open to put something small in. This is from a mailer. It was a trifold mailer. Uh, I decorated the whole thing and it was supposed to be like a little folio, but I didn't reinforce the folds and they came apart. So I took it apart and having it apart, I said, okay, fine. And the pocket, I put this little card in. I'm like half tempted to take this out of here and put it in my sun, one of my sunflower journals. And then I have this little fold down and up. So coffee dyed ledger paper. Uh, this is, um, what do you call those column pads? And then, um, just some blue, uh, scrapbook paper to put in this pocket. Okay. Here's that first cluster. I, I think I've mentioned it in previous videos. I made a cluster, but it was too busy. I put too much stuff in it. So there's this wooden paper and there's this, um, 
like wallpaper pattern lavender paper and there's just green and white striped paper and there's some book page and there's uh, a Tim Holtz flower and a Tim Holtz label and it just got really busy. I, there's a close up so you can see what it looks like. But I decided since this was my practice book that I was going to stick it in here so I could see it. This is paper from a calendar um, and a strip of scrap that I just threw on here. And um, I was kind of trying to make a little side strip to put this cluster on to break this page up because it was all this purple. And then I just added the tulips from this, this page. Okay, and again, I was working, I was playing with making little strip clusters where you take strips of paper and glue them together. So there's some coffee dyed paper back there, some more paper from the calendar, uh, and some strips where I trimmed stuff off of the calendar. Um, some of it is the um, painted side, and some of it is the words. Uh, and then added a, uh, and then this was my first attempt at sewing ruffles. So this was one of those ones where you fold it on itself and then run it through the sewing machine folded. Um, and I have since learned to make nicer ruffles and that keeps sticking. I wish it wouldn't, but it does. Might have to put something there. So I, this is a little fold out. I put some paper here as a pad and this is, believe it or not, this is uh, the elastic from a fitted sheet. That's what this little ruffle is. It's a strip of elastic from a fitted sheet. If you watched my decluttering videos, you saw um, that I hauled, in the very first one, I hauled a bunch of stuff from that I got out of my linen closet. And there was a, a really thin, worn out, navy blue fitted sheet. And I broke it down, tore it up, and got all the elastic off and I kept it. And it reminded me of just a, a ruffle. So I trimmed it up a little and I've used it as the top of this pad. Um, anyways, this is more of those strip clusters with some flower embellishments. Again, a little one, it's just a piece of craft paper and a piece of the calendar. And um, that closes on itself like that. For some reason, this one kind of fabric glue I have upstairs, I like it for some things, and then for other things, it just, it seems like it never dries. Like it leaves sticky. So we'll have to see. Anyway. Okay, moving along. This was an experiment in creating a postcard from, there's a book, one of the books that I hauled in an antique video was called The Last Two Million Years and there were tons of pictures in it. This is one of those pictures. I put it on some craft paper and made a postcard out of it. I practiced some more sewing. Um, even stopped, changed a stitch, uh, went back. Uh, I put a little, you know, label on here. It's a pat. I don't know if you can see it. It's a mountain pasture. They're sheep. I'm assuming this is somewhere in Europe, Ireland, something like that. Um, I can't remember what the um, caption for the picture said. It said, but I, I don't remember. Uh, so, and then I decorated the other side like a postcard. Uh, this has a belly band. Um, it comes open and this folds out for journaling space in both directions. Now, normally I, another thing, lesson learned, I made the little fold out piece and then I realized, wow, it just kind of flips open and all that stuff all the time. I should put a belly band on it one that opens so that you can take it out, open it up, pull it out, journal on it, tuck it back in, and then close it back down again. But I had already glued this down. So you can see the seam there. So normally I would plan ahead and this would go under that, but it didn't this time. So there you have it. Again, practice book. I did, however, make a little closure for it. I put a little... This is actually... I don't, can you see that little triangle? That little triangle behind those flowers is from cutting the corner off of a tag. I kept, I put the, so I put the corner on there. So postcard goes in this pocket, which is um, 
decoration off of a scrap off of a scrapbook page of this um, just centered up over this side pocket. This I decorated here. Um, this is a tuck. It is not glued down on this side. That's intentional. Um, and I just put there's a little bookworm, kindred spirits. They're just little craft paper. Um, I've been taking a bunch of these and gluing them into a craft paper book that I have uh, so that they're backed um, and not bright white. Um, and then on the other side of this, there's a pocket here that I don't have anything in yet. Um, but there's, I glued this piece of craft paper down because I made this tag that's from a print um, of a book that I ordered and then this wallpaper looking, this is light enough to be written on. So I figured I made this tag and I think I was going to put it in here and it doesn't fit because this, I forgot this only goes to this halfway point. <laughs> so it doesn't fit. So what I did was I glued a piece of craft paper over the page stuck a piece of embellishment, uh, a, an embellishment sticker on it, and just stuck this tag down in this pocket. Uh, these are some uh, things I'm working on currently for further in the book. When I find that spot, I'll let you know. These two little pockets. All right, we got this tag. This was one of my first tries at mixed media, hence the, that's actually dryer sheet that I coffee dyed. You know, after it's gone through the dryer and all the fabric softener has been melted out of it. Um, that's what that is. That kind of fuzzy looking stuff. I just took the dryer sheets and you throw them in coffee dye. They take the color and then you just tear them up into pieces and it makes this kind of soft fuzzy stuff. So I stuck a little piece of the dryer sheet under the butterfly and kind of over top of this. And it's kind of got a journaling spot there. A day to remember. Maybe you could put a date something like that there. Um, so that goes in that pocket. And then up here in this pocket is a little envelope. Um, these were some practice collage cards I was making and this little envelope has a art in it. These are from a set of die cuts that I have. I've used them a couple times in the book. There's squares, there's circles, there's rings, there's ovals, there's hearts from all different kinds of pattern paper. Okay, here we go. This is another book a thing here. This one um, was supposed to be two pockets, but I glued this down because it was not holding. Again, I say that book pages are a little bit fragile to have these layered pockets and this middle one just be book page. Oh, there it is right there. You can see it tore. Can you see that tear where my thumbnail's going in? Maybe if I move it up some. Right there, it tore, so I just glued the whole, I glued the, I glued the edge of it closed. There we go. Um, I made this tag. I thought it was kind of fun. I cut the edge, uh, the angled edges with my pinking shears and same here. Um, and then I just put, you know, I collaged some scrapbook paper onto here uh, again, messing with scraps that were on my desk. So I covered the tag on this side with a lined paper and on this side with some scrapbook paper that was a scrap from putting this book together. Uh, and then, you know, craft paper, cutouts, just little scraps. Put that together. This is some more of those stickers out of those um, sticker books that I ordered from Amazon that, uh, to me, the borders are just way too thick. That big, thick white border drives me crazy. Um, I have a couple things I'm trying, and if they work out, I'll put a video together and show them to you. Um, I think it's going to be kind of cool if if they do work, so we'll see. One lady was kind enough to suggest on my channel that if I took the stickers out of the book and put them on some sort of other paper, since I was going to fussy cut them anyway because I don't like all the white, she said stick them in another piece of paper, and then you can save all that gorgeous backing paper that comes in those books. She's right. I've been sticking them in a craft paper book. So when I have experimented and I figure it out, I'll, I'll show you. Uh, this is just stuck here. There's, this was just to fill in this space. And then there's a little tag here. Again, I was playing with um, 
the strip cluster idea and some other ideas I had seen. Um, this is a sticker, not from the book. Um, and then I just, you know, book page, pattern page, plain page, blank page, put it all together, make a cluster kind of an idea. Um, somebody was, somebody's formula. I can't remember whose. Um, if I do remember, I'll try to link the video, but uh, it was a formula that somebody used. And um, there were no specifics to it, but she she did a blank page, a neutral blank, a color, uh, book page, and decorative page. And then, of course, your focal points. Okay, again, a practice with some stitching. This was, again, another one of those strip clusters. I, I, I made a bunch of them trying to follow that little that idea. Uh, these, I believe, are stickers from this book again, but I I cut them out. I fussy cut them. See the butterflies? I fussy cut all of those out of that sticker book. I actually just peeled the stickers off the page and cut them. Since I was gluing them down anyway, I didn't care if they were still tacky. Um, and then I just glued all everything down, decorated with the butterflies, and then I went and stitched around it. I actually even kind of, my crooked stitching kind of followed the uh, crooked that was an accident. I did not do that on purpose. Uh, I am not that good with a sewing machine yet. Maybe someday. Okay, here we go. This page could use a little embellishment, maybe. Um, right now, it just has this tag. Again, this is a junk mail tag. Uh, I was playing with... Um, that actually looks like you bought that tablet in the, with the border I put on there. That looks like... This is just some blue, um, you know, those little notepads you can buy just to sit by your phone or whatever. It's a piece of that, um, on here that I inked and then I put a border on it. Uh, and I put, um, I have some burlap ribbon that has this lace already attached to it. And I cut a piece off with the lace and glued it up here. And here's a piece of it, uh, after I had cut the lace off, I used a piece of it here. So... Yeah, and then there's some coffee dyed doily and my... I'm, I've been practicing collage, so, you know, that maybe I can make some collage masterboards. That's what these cards were an attempt at, uh, was collage masterboards. I, I did it before I, you know, I just took some scrapbook paper, tore it into pieces, and collaged it down. It was all from the same pad, hence the fact that it matched. Um... This was a thing of stickers that I really liked. It was just these old dresses, some old hats, and some old shoes. Uh, and you'll see them throughout this book. You can see some hats and shoes on the back of that one. Uh, again, these were junk mail that I covered with scrapbook paper. There's a paper doily behind this dress. And then the shoes and hat that go with it are on the back. And then on this one... Oh, it's coming up. I don't think I glued this one down. I think I relied on the sticky of the sticker and it's not staying. So we're going to add a little glue while I got you here. See, it's a flip through and repair session. All right. So yeah, so um, this is one of those big stickers out of that sticker book that I don't like the board. And you can see I inked it all up so it blends a little better. So I don't mind it after they're inked, but I, I don't know. I just feel like I... Uh, I got a little bit of the lace from this burlap. Uh, I actually separated it from the burlap and tucked it under there. And then on the back again is the hat and shoe that matches the dress. At least my selection for matching the dress. Uh, and then this was from a this is from a bow bunny six by eight paper pad that I have. I've seen other people with it, so I know some of you have it. Um, and then I just added some torn coffee dyed paper to kind of go there and those go in there. And as you can see, I punched a hole in it. I don't remember why I punched a hole. I think I was going to tie something there, but I don't, I don't know. Maybe I'll come back and tie something there. Okay. Now I was working on, um, making things for these pockets. And I, I have, I have a couple of these four by six pads. Cause when I bought the, the 12 by 12 pad, if there was a four by six pad there for scrapbooking, I'd, bought it with it. So, um, and they make really good, quick 
postcards. So I just ripped one out, added a sticker. It says, be not afraid of going slowly. Be only afraid of standing still. And then I put the little bird. Uh, the back will probably end up getting decorated like a postcard, but right now I just was filling a tuck spot. Um, here we have, again, those dresses that I was telling you about. Here you go. So we have a purple one. Um, so this is decorated to match that. And it, it's a once upon a time and a happily ever after. So we have the purple. And then I practiced some more stitching. This one was really far in. This was before I was trying to go closer to the edge. And then this one, I sewed this tab on, as you can see by all of the back stitching and over stitching. And again, um, these are dress and shoes and hat on clusters to kind of stand out. And I made two of those. So there's one here for this pocket, which again is, no, I think that's all the way covered. And then one for that front pocket. All right, and here was me playing with fabric flips. So this is a flip, you flip it up and then I put a tab on here so that you would know that this opens. Because I feel like before it didn't look like it opened. So that kind of holds the page down. You flip it up, you open up the journaling spot, close it back up, kind of gets caught. But if you fold that all the way up, it won't. There we go. All right, now, um, so I covered this pocket. I covered this with a um, large butterfly. I'm pretty sure I had this open to tuck stuff in and I just decided to seal it off. Uh, this is a full page pocket that I don't have anything for. I was working on these to go in this pocket and this pocket. So yeah, and then here I need to embellish this and I have them working on this. So I have this tag in here, another one of the dresses with a shoe and a hat. I didn't really do anything to the back. I should probably cover this with some sort of paper so you could write on it. But that's a very narrow pocket, so it was hard to make things to fit in there. This one doesn't have anything yet, but these have these little narrow slides. They do not have focal points yet. Uh, That one's going to need a tab. They don't have focal points yet, but um, I'm holding these over here to the side like I'm showing them to my computer, which is over here. Um, but this is, again, more of those, you know, a background relatively neutral, uh, some book page, some colored pages that kind of go together, uh, and it, they will get focal points at some point. Um, but these, these pockets are really narrow because I was doing that. Um, I probably will never do one of these cut flip things again. They're kind of cool, but they're kind of annoying. So, uh, this was just a pocket that I made this little card for. It says home, great memories start here. Uh, this is some more of that dryer sheet behind the little bird. And here I fussy cut a bee. Can you guys see the bee? I guess you can. And it says life's little moments and then there's a little spot to write, you know, maybe a fun moment down. Okay. So, all right. And then let's see what we've done back here. So I moved this tag. This used to be up front and I moved it because I needed something here and I thought it went better with this page. Sorry about that guys. You might see a little skip there. I had to take care of something. Um, so, th yeah, this was from the front. And then these are more of those strips that I made that are going to go in here. And again, they need focal points. Um, but their places are saved and I can add their focal points later. Um, oops. And then here, I just took this, um, here is where my story begins. Um, it's kind of a little map and I covered the back of it. You can write a little bit on here 
And then this, I created a little card. Um, these are some stickers that I had and uh, a, another picture out of that, um, uh, the last two million years book of Stonehenge, uh, which I thought was really neat. So, uh, and then again, I practiced some more stitching. I've been doing a lot of practice with stitching. This is a tuck, not a pocket, but, um, and then this is also in need of something. Now these pockets, as you can see, I don't know if you can see that. You see how far over my finger only goes and I've got all this space. It's like that on both sides. When I did these, I, I mean, I was putting a ton of glue so that they would hold. And, um, it was also a very, very wet, like cheaper craft glue. So I was afraid that it wouldn't hold. So yeah, these pockets have really wide glued margins. So it's, it's hard because I, I look at it and I say, okay, well that'll fit. It's, and then it gets in there and it's too wide. It won't slide. Uh, this page is not a pocket or anything. It's just got to be covered because you can see through it. Well, it doesn't have to be covered, but, uh, it's just plain pink and it's probably going to get some sort of an embellishment. Uh, again, I glued this pocket down. It was going to be one of those double layered pockets. Um, but I'm just really not comfortable with that. So I don't know if you can see that, but you can see where it catches there. This is really, really wide margins again. Um, this, I didn't cover it with anything because I just really like that floral thing. Okay, and then we come to these two. This is a split page pocket. I've got one tag in here, which I think you've already seen. I just moved it. Um, again, this is the background paper is from that Bow Bunny pad. And um, we are the music makers. We are the dreamers of the dreams. I can still remember um, Gene Wilder saying that. And if you're old enough to know what I'm talking about, then you know what I'm talking about. All right. Um, pocket. I don't have any small tags finished. I think I brought a bunch down here to start working on finishing projects that I've started that I haven't finished. Um, this also doesn't have anything in it, so it will need a note card or something. Um, this, I did stick a tag in this pocket. It's just a simple... Um, coffee dyed column paper on the back of a tag with a butterfly on it and just some simple uh, ribbon at the top. And this is that little fold out that you can journal on. Uh, I should probably find some way to tuck that so it doesn't fall. This is a pocket with nothing in it. This is also a pocket with nothing in it. This is a pocket with nothing in it. This is a pocket with something in it. Um, so I kind of, I mean, you can journal on the back. Um, the front is open. I put a flower and a butterfly and I left it because I like the patterns together and this is light enough that if you really wanted to, you could write on it. Um, again, this was when I was only gluing edges. So there's, it's kind of puffy. It puckers a little bit, but yeah, so that goes in that page. So, um, and then this is a blank page that I, this is one of the first ruffles that I sewed. So I stuck it at the top of here and then I've got another tall pocket that needs a, a tall. Okay. And then we have this pocket down here. This is another piece of that trifold thing that I was telling you I made that fell apart because the, the edges gave, um, there's a pocket on here with a tag in it. Just some Tim Holtz labels and um, another one of those shapes from that die cut box that I told you I had and the uh, doily and just some torn. There's a piece of the torn doily on there, um, but this is just neutral so you can write on it. Uh, I still want to come back and put a sticker or something on here, but for the most part, it's done. Uh, I did put a tab on this pocket and another piece of that butterfly paper to write on. And that just goes right in there. And then we have this page. There's a pocket on the back. This is blank. I haven't decided what I'm going to do with it yet, but I'm sure something will hit me down the road. Maybe I'll practice um, an external pocket, like um, 
uh, that I see on YouTube. Somebody makes some really cool pocket that I want to try. I'll try it and stick it there, put something in it. Uh, here's a pocket. And then this is the back. And since I've decided um, on what I'm going to do with the napkins to cover, do the covers, I may go ahead and glue this down, but it's very crooked. <laughs> I glued it in here crooked, so I might end up having to, I don't know. I don't know how I can straighten that out. I guess I could just trim it. I mean, worst comes to worst, you just cut it, right? Because it looks pretty straight along this edge. Not too, too off, but it, it's pretty off up here. So I might have to trim it up there. But yeah, so that's the end. That's where I am on this altered book. As you can see, it has turned into quite the uh, large mouth here. Um, and then I have the breaks where, the, where it's just coming apart. So hopefully future endeavors will be. And I'm wondering if maybe I didn't take enough, because I think I only, like, I was watching all the videos about ripping pages out between and then um, making the, the you know, the, the place where you tore all the pages out be inside your pocket so it doesn't show and gluing the pages together. And I did all of that um, to make my pockets and everything. But what I think I didn't do was trust that I needed to, because look at all the pages. There's a ton of pages in this altered book. Um, I only tore out like six or seven pages between each one. So I, I don't think I left myself enough room. I think I, that's why the binding broke that and the fact that I started from the front and worked backwards, which I've also since, and even before learned that you're not supposed to do. <laughs> and so, yeah, um, I'll keep you posted on where I get with, um, messing around with it. Um, but in the meantime, let me see how much time I have here. Hmm. I wanted to show you really quick because I really, really do want to do altered books. So I want to show you really quick the two kinds of all I've started four actually, uh, as far as page tearing goes. And I want to show you the two different ones that I have. I think these ones are just, let me see. Let me see how this comes. Oh, no, these are the signature ones. I should be able to tell by looking at the top. Okay, these are just regular tear out ones. So I've watched several videos. I've watched some videos of people who do altered books as an art form, and I've watched videos of people who do altered books as junk journals. Uh, they actually work very differently. Um, so I'm going to show you where I've started these and I'm going to tell you what my idea is combining all of their thoughts. And I went to Gail Augustinelli's channel and watched her do an altered book from like three or start an altered book from like three years ago. And she said she was using the craft arena. I think I'm saying that right method. So I went over to craft arena channel and from six years ago, she was showing, I, I watched her altered books. And what she does is glue two pages together for strength. And that's what a lot of the artists who use these books as art do. They glue two pages together um, to make almost like a board um, for strength. So what I've done is um, I've gone through and I, I saved the flypaper and the title page. And then I started here and I said, okay, uh, I'm going to pull this apart. I started here and I said, two pages to glue together flat, tear out 10 pages, two pages to glue together flat. And that's the front and back of a pocket, all four of those pages. So these two pages will get glued together to reinforce each other. Then I do that again. So I have another group of four pages here. So I have two pages to glue together, uh, 10 pages torn out, two pages to glue together. Now in Crafty Rena's books, the way she sort of did it, it seemed like she glued all her pages together. She put paper on top and any pockets she wanted to make, she made on top of the page more so than with the pages. But I'm going to combine the method of gluing the pages together for strength with the idea of making pockets out of them. And these are just the regular books that you just tear pages out of. 
you know, we rip them out. This is another one of those. So when I go through here, I think I'm at a, this was two pages. Uh, let me see. Okay, I ripped out here. So this was two pages to glue together. This is two pages for the front of the next one. And then I tear out 10 pages. So this is just a regular tear book. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then I will take these two pages, excuse my arm, let me get this jar down here so you don't have to look at my arm all the time. These two pages get clipped together. They will get glued together to reinforce these. And, and for this book, it's really necessary. These pages are really flimsy. So um, this method is up, hopefully going to work really well for this book. Then I'm going to take these two pages and clip them together. And then I tear out 10 more. I'm not going to do the whole, you guys know how to do book tearing. I'm not going to do a whole video of book tearing, especially since I used 40 minutes to tell you about the old altered book. But anyway, so I'm in the process of tearing that one out and I've already done this one. So I have those two to work on for just regular torn out pages. Now I want to show you something interesting that I found really quick. This book, this book is glued in signatures. So tearing the pages out like we normally do wasn't working. So what I did was I found each signature. So this signature is here and here, the front and back. I took the four pages in the front because I'll glue two together and I'll glue two together and then I'll have two pa a page, two pages to work with. And then at the back of the signature, I took the last four pages. So I glue two together and I glue two together and I have two pages to work with. Does that make sense? Am I off camera? Let's try that again. So I take the front of the signature, four pages. These two will get glued together. These two will get glued together. And then out of those, I will make a pocket. Uh, same with this one. Now, um, how I did this was I then, once I found each signature, you can see that that's glued together in signatures. We all know what signatures look right, like, right? So what I did was I found each signature. I got to the end of it. And these signatures are glued in the book and to each other. I found the signature. I opened up to the middle of the signature and I pulled out the signature pages. Can you see the glue? It looks like stitched, but it's just glued. And then these are actually pretty strong, still pretty strong in here. So I found another one that is signatures and I was going to show you how I was doing this. So what I did basically, I don't have these clipped together in fours. It doesn't look like it looks like I was clipping them together in twos. So this is a signature right here, a glued in signature. Let me make sure I don't have, and you can even pull it just like you would a regular signature. So this is the front page of the next signature like that. And then they're kind of stuck together. The back page of one signature is stuck to the front page of the next signature, almost like the fly paper at the front. So you take this and I clip two to glue together. I clip another two to glue together. And then I take the middle of the signature or the end of the signature and I clip two to go together and two more to go together. So I have two at the beginning of the signature and two at the end of the signature because those are the ones that will connect. We all know how signatures work. So these two pages are connected to these two pages and those two pages are connected to these two pages, right? So then I take the eight pages or four folios in the middle 
and I pull them out. I usually do it two at a time. So one, two, one, two. And you can see I can pull it away as a whole piece of paper, right? And I pull them out from the middle. Rather than tearing out pages like we normally do, I pull out a signature. So you get connected signature pages. I mean, they're torn, obviously, where they were glued in, but they're connected signature pages. So that went in there like that, right? And then I tear out the other two. So in this case, because of the way these are glued in here, tearing the pages out, like say I'm going to tear out 10 pages in between where I want my um, pocket pages to be glued together. If I just tear out 10 pages, I might have loose ends on the other side of the signature. You know what I mean? So you'd have a page. So this seems to work better for these signature books. And I think it's going to keep the binding sturdier because I'm not pulling it apart. Um, and when you have uh, uh, the, the ladies who do these as art, where they, they make like they want it to lay flat and then they make this a layout, a collage layout, and the whole thing is one big canvas. They want a book that lays flat and they want sewn in signatures because what she did was she would go to the middle of the signature and pull out pages. And that's how they reduced the bulk in the book. And um, this is what they ended up with. And I was realizing that that's how these were going to have to be done, even though they're not sewn in, they're glued in. And this is working a lot better. And it takes out, um, it takes out eight pages. Uh, if we were to tear it, we would tear out eight pages for each section. And funny enough, the other one worked out the same way. So for every set of pages I kept, every signature had a group. The middle that I tore out of every signature was, was the same size, was eight pages or four folios, <laughs> which I thought was kind of funny. I don't know if that's a standard for glued in signature books, but... Considering the fact that these two spines are not the same, I thought it was kind of funny that the signatures were the same size. But anyway, so those are the books, the different types of books that I've started. I'm going to stop this here. I feel like there are plenty of videos online that show you how to tear pages out of altered books. But I found that the, the glued in signature thing was a little bit different. So I thought I would share with you what I discovered and what I was doing with that. And I will try to keep you updated. Maybe this will turn into a little altered book series um, where I do stuff with the books on camera and you can see what I'm doing. Um, but I think that's going to be it for this one, guys. My videos seem to be averaging up close to an hour because I talk too much. <laughs> so I will see you guys in the next video. If you are enjoying Paper Old and New, please subscribe. And I will see you in the next video. I think it's going to be a haul. So looking forward to that. Talk to you later, guys. Bye-bye.